This video is going to show you how to use some of the basic features of Explore Learning's Orbital Motion Kepler's Laws Gizmo. So this is a little shockwave uh, simulation, and what's really nice about it is easy which you can use it. I'll click over on the left hand side is where all the motion, all the action happens. On the right hand side, this is where everything changes the data. You can collect data. There are tabs at the top for helping collect data and even being able to graph the data in the ac actual simulation. So for the controls, I'm going to switch from this planet background to show grid. And I'll press play just to show what's going on. So there it is moving around. I can also hit click on show trails and it'll actually show the path of it and I can adjust the speed of the simulation during the simulation. So I can slow it down at an important point or I can speed it up as it moves around. And then I can show the foci, click on the button, shows where the dots the center and the fo focus are. To make an adjustment in this, what I have to do is reset it. So I'll hit the reset button down here in the bottom left and I'll drag my planet to where I want it to start. So I'll have it start there and then I'll move the arrow down and I'll drag it a little bit more. When you're doing the lab activity, it'll give you a number like make the speed 15. Just get the speed close to 15. A little above it or a little below it's fine. You get the idea of what's going on. And then I'll press play. Make it go around once. So now I'm all set. To get some data off this, I can click on the table button and click on record data and the and it records the data from what I just set up. The cool thing is, if I have an activity where I need to record a lot of data, what I can do is I can hit the reset button, slide the planet to where I need it to be, and then just hit record data. Once the planet has made one orbit, this will work. If you haven't made an orbit, you just jump right into this. It won't work right away. You need to at least make one orbit so it gets some data into its, uh, into its variables in order for it to work. Record data. Now I want to go out a little bit farther and get beyond five AUs of distance. So I'll hit the minus sign and move it out here. Here's 6 AUs, 8 AUs of distance. I'll make the velocity a little bit longer and then I'll just hit record data. And then I'll move it out a little bit farther, hit record data. Now I'll use this minus sign over here to zoom out a little bit more on my scale. I'm going to go out here to 20 and record data. So I don't have to run every simulation because some of them may take quite a while. I'll just hit slide around and record data. But it only records data if you already made one run in this orbital motion. Then for the graph, I can go over here where it says graph, and I can see the points, but I really can't see the points. So these buttons on the right, these are scaling buttons. So here's the vertical scale, and I'll back out so I'm a little bit farther away. And here's the horizontal scale. So again, I can back out or I can zoom in, and I can adjust the center of it over here as well. So now I can see what the data looks like, and I can change the data itself. So I just changed what it looked like, but I can't see it, so I'll back out again. Start sliding my scale around. So I can start seeing the points. So I'm just zooming out using those controls. On one of the sections, you've got to find these area slices. So to find the area slices over here on the bottom right hand side, this is the size of the area. As this goes around, it's going to have a certain period of motion. And this is how many days are swept out by the planets. So let me zoom in a little bit. Actually, I'll slide the planet in first before I start zooming in. Now I'll zoom in. Then I'll have the planet go in motion and I'll click on sweep area. And so that's the area associated with 100 days of the orbital's motion. And then I can adjust that any way I want to. Click on sweep area and it shows me that that value. And that's something you'll be doing later. Back to the controls, one more thing to show you and that's how to change the mass of the planet because in Activity C you have to change the mass of the sun actually. I'll hit reset. You always got to hit reset before you make an adjustment. I'll hit reset and I want to change the mass of the sun. So over here on the right hand side, the sun mass is small, then I can go up to medium. And then I can run my simulation again. I'll have it show the trail. And maybe I'll just get rid of the grid this time just to so, show you something different. And there's the planet going around. So these are all the basic functions you're going to need for the three activities you're doing with this gizmo.